Hi, I'm Roxy. Last year, April, I did a review on Glaze, which is software you can use to protect your art style against AI scrapers. Now, a year later, I thought it fitting for me to review Glaze's Hooligan little brother, Nightshade. So today we're going to look at its purpose, where to get it, how to use it effectively, and some before and after comparisons. Now just before I get into Nightshade, I just wanted to mention that uh, Glaze 2.0 is out now. When I reviewed it last year, it wasn't even properly out, it was still in beta. Now with Glaze 2.0, they've promised less noticeable modification to images. Um, so, of course, that's what we've all been waiting for. That's what we want to hear. Now, I've tested that and I'm pleased to report it does a much better job than when I previously reviewed it. On the left is the, the glazed result from the beta version, which you saw in my review last year, April. And on the right hand side is the glazed result from version 2.0. So, of course, not perfect. We can still see some artifacts, but noticeably better. So back to Nightshade. The first question I want to get out the way is, how does it differ from Glaze in its purpose? So here we go. Glaze is a defensive tool that obscures the style of your artwork. Nightshade is an offensive tool that poisons the AI training data set. I'll get into more detail on how it does that and whether you should use both later. But first, let's look at how to get it. Like Glaze, Nightshade is free. I'll put a link uh, in the description for, for both. So you grab it off the website, download it. It's, it's fairly big. Uh, the zipped file is about two and a half gigs. So depending on your internet connection, it might take a while to download. Once you've downloaded it, you'll have the zip file. Now I can only comment on PC. I don't know if the procedure is the same on a Mac, but once you've unzipped this file, you'll have a nightshade folder with a whole bunch of other folders and files. Uh, you need to scroll down to find the nightshade.exe. Now, if you've got your file extensions hidden, you won't see the .exe part. It'll just say Nightshade, but you can recognize it by the icon. Now, it doesn't technically install. You actually run it right from here. And because it doesn't technically install, uh, it doesn't add anything to your start menu. But you can always just right click on the .exe. And uh, mine says unpin from start because I've already pinned it. And it just say pin to start. And then you can access it from your start menu. Now, before I run the software, I just want to give you a visual representation of what Nightshade does. Uh, Nightshade is a piece of software that you run your art through. And it kind of glazes the surface of the art with barely detectable visual data. The technicalities of how this actually works is way above my pay grade. <laughs> but the important thing is that uh, when the tech bros come to scrape your artwork without your consent, and they will because they're dickheads, uh, they go ahead and happily add your artwork to their data set for training their model. But instead of training their model, your artwork introduces incorrect and inaccurate data. For example, if you had to paint a hat, then Nightshade might make the AI believe that a hat doesn't look like a hat, but rather that it looks like a turd instead. This is just an example, of course. But let's say that that's the subject matter that Nightshade chooses. It will do this with all artwork of hats that are run through the Nightshade system. So with time, the accumulation of these scraped images of hats begins to poison the AI data set and ruins the AI model. So when a prompter comes along and let's say he asks AI to generate artwork of Zuckerberg wearing a top hat, then instead of getting this, they'll be getting this because the AI fully believes that a hat actually looks like a turd. This is, of course, just an absurd example, and what you're seeing on screen isn't how it actually works. This is literally me painting it just for lols, but I think a, a visual representation does help a little. So let's quickly 
look at how to use the software and what all the toggles mean. So you'll double click on your EXE to fire up a Nightshade or the link from your start menu. And it might take a little while to open and the first time you load it, it might also want to load some resources and you'll see uh, when it's done, it'll say resources loaded successfully. The first thing that we need to do is select the file that we want to poison. Go to your, uh, your images, find the image that you want to shade for this demonstration. I'm actually going to use this nightshade character that I painted specifically for this YouTube video. Okay, once that's loaded in, we've got some sliders, just like we had in Glaze. The first slider is the intensity of the poison. The higher you make this, the more effective the poison will be to the dataset. But you have the trade-off that the visual distortion of the image will also be more evident. Now I grabbed my Cherry Dragon painting and I ran it through Nightshade at different intensities. And here it is. Personally, I'll always go for the low intensity version because I care about the fidelity of the images in my portfolio. However, you could pump out some quick and nasty work using the high intensity setting and upload it somewhere like Pinterest for the scrapers to ingest en masse. Um, if you've got the time and desire, why not? So that is one strategy. But I think for most of us, if it's our actual artwork, we're probably going to want to put it on the, the lowest setting. The next slider is the render quality. Now, the more time you give the software to work on your image, the stronger the poison will be. This slider doesn't affect how obvious the visual distortion looks. So if you have the time, always put it on the slowest. Now, at this point, you may be thinking 20 minutes per image is going to be way too long if you have to do your whole portfolio. But see, I don't think you need to do your whole portfolio. If you've already shared your artwork on socials, um, it's already been scraped. So there's no real point in glazing or nightshading it now. It's done. They have it already. So I think it's better to concentrate on shading future work. And honestly, if you're whipping out even one painting a day, which is quite a lot, um, 20 minutes of that day spent nightshading it is negligible. I mean, you can do it while you're cooking or exercising or brushing your cat or whatever. That time won't even cut into your day. So my suggestion is to always leave it at the slowest and give it time to cook. Next, we select where we want the shaded file to be saved to. It's fine to even select the same folder as the original because it doesn't overwrite the file. It actually appends some text to the end of the file name. And then before you run Nightshade, just have a look over here where it says current tag. This is where Nightshade tries to figure out what the image is about. And sometimes it's it's pretty spot on. And uh, other times it, it can't figure out what the painting is about. But the reason why you need to specify this and be accurate about it is so that it can deceive AI into thinking that that thing is actually something else. Just like my previous example of the hat and the turd, um, if it only does that with my image, it's not as convincing as if Nightshade does it with every single painting or image of a hat. That's how it gets AI to believe that a hat looks like a turd. Nightshade also encourages that when you post that artwork on social media that you use this as a tag in your post. So AI scrapers come along and provisionally add it to the database with these tags and then they send it to their exploited workforce in the global south to verify. And they're humans so they see a hat and confirm that it's a hat. Uh, the AI doesn't see a hat though, the AI sees this but confidently includes it in the training data as a hat. That's how the poison starts. And the more hat turds that they have, the harder it becomes for AI to show something that resembles an actual hat. Uh, and so it goes for all subject matter. So then you hit run nightshade. And while that's running, I'll show you some before and afters of work I've already shaded, all using low intensity uh, and slowest render quality. And we're also gonna talk about whether there's any point to using glaze and nightshade together. Now there's a lot of talk in artist circles about glazing and shading your work. Have you glazed and shaded, they ask. Because glaze is defensive and nightshade is offensive, so many people will use it together. 
Now, if you watched my glaze review last year, I made the point that glaze protects artwork against style mimicry. So if you don't have a recognizable style, I think you're kind of wasting your time a little bit using glaze. People like Loish, for example, you know, where her work is instantly recognizable. You see something and like, that's a Loish. You know, people like that, they should definitely glaze their stuff. So if your work has a an obvious style, then you're doing yourself a favor by using glaze because it's going to protect that style. But I don't think any of these prompt monkeys are typing in give me a cat in the style of Roxanne Lapper because my style is all over the place. And honestly, for most of us, that's the case. So personally, I won't glaze my artwork. But Nightshade, on the other hand, that's something I'd do for sure just for spite. We should ideally all be doing that. There are instances when it makes sense not to. You can't afford to do uh, that for client work, obviously. It needs to be the best quality that you can give them. Uh, and if you're entering a competition or you're printing it, obviously you also want it at the best quality that it can visually be. But if it's just a sketch that you're going to dump on Instagram, why not? And, and don't go saying that you nightshaded it. You don't want to chase the tech bros away. It actually needs to be a bit of a honeypot. And on that note, I think it might also be a good idea to change the file name after Nightshade is done with it. I'm thinking, you know, if Nightshade keeps adding the same sort of stuff to the end of file names, then that might be a way for tech bros to recognize and eliminate Nightshaded images. So that's just a thought. So what I do is I rename the image before I upload it uh, to socials. Although I think socials probably rename the file themselves, but still, just in case. But for those of you who want to glaze and shade your work, I grabbed my Cherry Dragon again and I did an experiment where one is only glazed, one is only nightshaded, and one is both. So let's take a look. The distortion is a bit hectic, but I mean one thing that helps is that most of the time our work is only viewed at a really small size. Sad as that is, most people never see your artwork in all its glory. All they see is as wide as their phone allows. So if that helps you feel a bit better about <laughs> Nightshade destroying your work, then, you know, there's that. Okay, while we've been looking at the slides, Nightshade finished. Here's the result of my Nightshaded Nightshade character. Not going to lie, that looks terrible. <laughs> Obviously, on some artwork, it looks worse than others. And if you get a bad result like this, I don't think anyone's going to judge you for rather uploading the original. But... On the other hand, while we wait for the software to improve, we could create art specifically for night shading. In fact, I have a homework assignment for you. We all know that AI struggles with hands. And so any artwork featuring hands is going to be irresistible for scrapers. So I propose that we all go out and do a hand study. Here's one I did last, last year, June. Why don't you do one too? Nightshade it and drop it onto socials with tags like these, hand, hand study, hand anatomy, and just leave it there like a honeypot. Also, feel free to find me on socials and tag me in your post and I'll go out of my way to like your hand studies. Big Tech wants to exploit artists, let's make them pay dearly for it. Now before I thank my patrons, I also just want to point out that Glaze and Nightshade are being implemented into Kara which is a portfolio alternative to ArtStation. So you might want to join up there and stop supporting ArtStation and indeed any company that treats artists with disdain. So that wraps up my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to my patrons and thank you for watching. Much obliged if you leave a like and subscribe. Until the next one, God bless.